namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Buddhang Dhammang Sanghang Namasami So, Saturday night at Baigiri, no electricity. Um, see, could be a few days before we, we uh, have electricity again. So, it's an opportunity to explore our, our uh, roots in simplicity. Um, that uh, you know, it's so easy for us to extol the, uh, say, the virtues of simplicity, but then, you know, we're actually, <coughs> our lives are pretty complicated just because of the, uh, kind of the web of the, and uh, uh, fabric of the culture and society that we're in, whether it's on the material level or, or just on the uh, kind of uh, intellectual, perceptual level. Um, uh, there's so much of the uh, complications that we don't actually notice. We don't, uh, because it's so uh, ordinary, it's, it's just we, uh, um, it's like, fish uh, don't really know what water is because they swim in it all the time. So we tend to, we send, tend to swim in complication and, uh, and uh, even though we might think about simplicity, we don't, uh, don't get to experience it that often. So this opportunity to to uh, not have electricity uh, is uh, is a good way of, of uh, one on just on a physical level. Okay, that uh, coming back to uh, simplicity of life without electricity, um, but then also to take it to take it deeper and and reflect on. Well, what other things are we dependent on, or what do we assume um, uh, is necessary, is essential, is unquestioned, and um, a a and uh, um, to be able to 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 re reflect that about our about our about our life, about our uh, the way our mind is. They, uh, recently I was uh, reading a, a, a book by a Tibetan teacher and he, he, he said the, uh, the, the word for meditation in Tibetan is gong. And it's a very simple word. And, but it, he said the literal meaning uh, is more like to to become familiar with, and and that's that's really uh, in in terms of meditation uh, to learn how to become familiar with the mind, familiar with our life, 
become familiar with the way that that the mind constructs how we experience the sense of self, the sense of the world, um, how the mind constructs the different layers of of uh, experience that uh, yeah, that do tend to be we don't we aren't so familiar with. Um, again, we we uh, uh, assume it. We we uh, uh, it doesn't get looked at so so clearly. So that meditation being uh, a, uh, a a way of uh, meditation and practice and Buddhist training, uh, a way of refamiliarizing ourselves. Uh, with the uh, with the ordinary, with the the uh, you know the basic functioning of our uh, what we call ourselves in the world. Similarly, in the in the Pali, say the word for meditation is generally say bhavana, which uh, as a uh, a literal meaning is like to bring into being. <coughs> uh, and to, if we, meditation is, a, there's a certain element of, we need to bring into being an awareness and clarity of our, of our experience, of our what are bring into being the qualities of of understanding and and uh, and a sense of of uh, stability or a sense of brightness uh, that's able to understand uh, its experience. You know, what is the experience of this human condition? Um, and then to bring into being the qualities that are conducive to helping to settle the mind, to help the mind become more discerning, to help the mind become more agile. Um, as our, um, you know, we're, we really are creatures of habit and we end up um, you know, trundling along our pathways of habit and conditioning, and uh, and even if it's good, uh, it's oftentimes not examined so well or not clearly uh, clearly understood. So that in terms of our uh, these are uh, things to be. Uh, re, yeah, reflected on. Um. <coughs> yes, yesterday at uh, at tea time, there was a question of you know about you know what is the meaning of life, and and I mean I gave a bit of a flip answer and and. Uh, but then also said, so, well, you, you know, sort of on the lines that well, you don't want to think about it too much. But in, in terms of you know, trying to understand the, the 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 opportunity to discern the the ways in which, as human beings, this life, we <coughs> we fall into <coughs> discontent and dissatisfaction. Okay. And but then also mm, learning how to uh, develop um, happiness, wisdom, peace, clarity, and and more about what we do rather than to ponder uh, too much about meaning. But. Uh, but of course, as the way the mind works, I mean, I thought about it more, 
and uh, and I think it uh, on a certain level, you know, without getting obsessed and and proliferating too much, the uh, it's actually you know we we as human beings, of course, we 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 do we do need to have <clears throat> we do need to have some meaning um, and and that's you know i think that's that's one of the problems of of modern life and modern society is i mean it all seems so meaningless and you know what what's the what's the point uh, and uh, to um, you know or if our meaning is just to you know, be a, a a cog in the the uh, um, the machine of creating a, a more Um, you know, gross national product, or uh, help the economy make more money for the economy. I mean, this just seems that's pretty pointless. Um, and or just to be able to get um, the meaning of life as as a uh, um, how do I get a decent retirement plan so I'm not a burden on others uh, when I get older. I mean, that's not much of a meaning. Uh, and, you know, so that, that, uh, that's, that sense of, of, you know, actually, well, and especially as, as Buddhist practitioners, um, you know, what, what is, what's the Buddha pointing to that makes life meaningful? Of course, the Buddha and the Buddhist teachings, um, there's a lot of emphasis placed on the, like the preciousness of, of human birth, uh, because it is a, an opportunity for creating a, uh, understanding and, and, and wisdom and, and freedom because we live in a, a realm that experiences both uh, pleasure and pain, happiness and suffering, um, so that, that uh, we have a range of experience that we can be reflecting on and understanding, learning from. And having the opportunity to turn our attention to uh, uh, understanding what a say what a, a, a true refuge is, what a a uh, uh, what what actually is the experience of, you know, of peace and, and liberation. Um, that is a, uh, and that, and that's inc that, that makes our life in incredibly meaningful. Uh, and to, to see that we do have this, this opportunity, we have this capacity uh, to to know and to 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 understand deeply, uh, and also that we can change. Um, we have the opportunity to you know, say like to bhavana, the sense of bringing into being. You know, of course, we can bring into being greed, hatred, and delusion, but that. That's not very useful, not beneficial for ourselves or for others. But that bringing into being 
that which really that which is really skillful, which is really wholesome, which is which brings uh, you know, a benefit to to oneself and to others. Um, um, but of course, it, it it does require a uh, uh, that a bringing into being of of awareness of knowing and not just an intellectual knowledge or more information but um, uh, uh, that, uh, that, 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 that the mind the human mind the heart has the capacity for um, it's like knowing and being content and free and yeah, this this deep well being because of the knowing. That's it's one of the uh, uh, turns of phrases that 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 that. Uh, um, I always found really inspiring was by Upasika ki nana yom. She she used the, the the term an unentangled knowing, and to me that's really beautiful. I said, yeah, there's this capacity of the of the mind, the heart to to know, to know clearly, to to know and understand deeply. But it's it's unent yeah, it's unentangled, um, and it's just that an, an inward staying, unentangled knowing, all outward knowing, cast aside. So that 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 sense of the you know, the, the the mind not proliferating, um, but it doesn't mean it's not. Uh, engaged and that's something that's really important to reflect on because there is this unentangled knowing but it's also that's what's actually truly capable of engaging skillfully um, because it sees clearly it understands deeply it's that capa- the tendency of the mind, the habit of the mind to keep proliferating, not able to, to not able to stop, not able to cease, not able to enjoy the 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 that 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 the settling of the mind. Like we have, we all experience ceasing and settling and the stopping of our minds. It's just, it's the nature, because the nature of the mind is to, the nature of everything, is to arise and cease. But the, say, the habit that we are entangled with is the entanglement in proliferation, in in becoming, in moving towards something else that is going to be more satisfying, more uh, interesting, more exciting, uh, or at least it's not. It's going to be moving away from what is one is dissatisfied with, irritated by, or frustrated by. So that we're we're always moving, looking for something else. And but the, of course, the reality is there is always arising and ceasing, and. Practically, without a beat, we just keep moving and looking for something else. Uh, 
something else to be, something else to do, something else to become. And we don't, we're not able to experience and feel what that unentangled knowing actually, what it feels like. Uh, and, and that, uh, so this sense of learning how to pay attention to those times when the mind does stop, or when, uh, when it becomes a bit peaceful, becomes a bit, to, to learn how to tune into that, because, all, you know, what, do, what, we te what tends to happen, one is, that, of course, we, again, we move, or we drop into, we drop into dullness, it's like, you know, unentangled knowing, Pfft. fall asleep, or drift off, uh, get distracted in some way. And so that, that to learn how to pay attention uh, when there is the, when there are these, these gaps and at the actual, there is an awareness, there isn't, that's the nature of the, of the mind uh, to, to know to be aware, but to l learn how to attend to that and, uh, and to recognize it so that one can bring that into being more. It's that function of bhavana, or to become familiar with it, as it is in that Tibetan term of meditation, to become familiar with an, an unentangled knowing. And, and it's not as if that unentangled knowing is a, 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 a not doing anything, not engaging, not... It's, you, you think, you know, who would be the, the, the best example of somebody who embodies this quality of unentangled knowing. And of course, okay, the Buddha. So, from the time that the Buddha was fully awakened, enlightened, one assumes that that unentangled knowing was the dominant quality of the mind, of the heart. And then, you know, he didn't spend 45 years just kind of with an unentangled knowing waiting to waiting to die and do nothing he the, the reason why we have Buddhism why we have um, these teachings why we have the Sangha is because the Buddha was able to respond to the world with clarity and insight and compassion. And that's grounded and rooted in this quality of, yeah, this unentangled knowing. Uh, to be able to lay down a structures and community and um, ways of being for Sangha to be a refuge, um, the however many volumes of the suttas there are, um, all of that arose that, that, and that all the, the places that he went to, uh, uh, traveling, teaching, uh, guiding, uh, and leaving a, a legacy that's, that's lasted for over 2,500 years. I mean, that's, that is the, the, uh, uh, the fruits of this, you know, this unentangled. So it isn't as if uh, one can't do anything or we can't feel anything. Uh, and it's, that is how we get the clutter away from or the complications 
away from our habitual tendencies so that we can do something really worthwhile, both, again, both for ourselves and for, for others. Uh, and so this quality, just reflecting on this quality of unentangled knowing, and that stepping away from or stepping out of that, that web of, of complication. I mean, it's actually one of the, one of the words that, that the Buddha uses in, uh, in uh, um, say, as a, si- as, a, as a synonym for, for Nibbāna, is Nipapancha, the non-complicated. Um, and that's actually one of the characteristics of somebody who is grounded in, rooted in, in Dhamma, in truth, is that they delight in non-complication. Um, uh, that, and that, that, so that just uh, that sense of reflection, uh, you know, delighting in non-complication, becoming familiar with this quality of unentangled knowing. So as we, 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 we take this interests. Oh, it's just something else that pops up in my mind is the uh, like Ajahn Chah. Um, I don't know what this, uh, whether it was in response to a, a question of what is Nibbana or, or something that he said in the midst of a teaching, but this is very... Uh, is that Nibbāna is the reality of non-grasping. You think, oh, okay, let's keep it simple, keep it, keep it clear. Now, this is what Nibbāna, this is our, in terms of, in terms of goals and meaning in our life, and these are worthy goals. These are worthy, the things are worthy of bringing meaning into our life. Uh, and, and learning how to make it so that it's not um, just theoretical or philosophical, uh, but what does that mean in our daily life? What's that mean? And what does the Buddha point to? And certainly, the the the, the uh, that encouragement toward um, just m- more clarity, more uh, a taking on of responsibility, c- commitment to 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 refuges, a commitment to say precepts in terms of living with uh, integrity and responsibility. Living with with um, a commitment to um, qualities, uh, uh, cultivation of qualities of generosity and kindness, um, commitment to to uh, to uh, living a life of of awareness and and. Um, you know, being able to be responsive to the world around us with this sense, yeah, being mindful, being clear. And that cultivation of, of, you know, of wisdom, of discernment. Yes, or, I mean, that is a that opens up this possibility it's a real meaning also the just that sense of uh, um, that the yeah the fruits of the path are not are not so far away they're not so impossible um, Right, the, uh, 
that entering into the stream of Dhamma, that opening the eye of Dhamma, these are not impossible say feats of attainment that are just happened in in uh, um, you know, 2500 years ago and it's, uh, hasn't been hasn't been seen again until the next Buddha comes around um, in however many kalpas um, but it's it, this is something that that is has been experienced and continues to be experienced and the Buddha makes it very clear that as long as one practice as long as there are people who practice the Eightfold Path in the world and put that that, that, that path of practice into into their lives and live it there are there will be people who experience the the fruits of the of the practice will enter into this stream of dhamma and, and, and this uh, this stream of awakening. It's not impossible. When we think in terms of that, oh, that that's incredibly meaningful to live a life of awakening. Um, so uh, that, that this 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 you know refl- so reflecting on it is I uh, think really important, um, and, not, and again it's important, but it, but it is important in terms of you know not making it a, um, you know, a just an intellectual concept or or a point of philosophical debate or a a uh, um, an idealized version of of, uh, you know, of of some yeah just just some something idealized and and, and conjured up but something very real and it's like yeah okay the nibbana the the, the reality of non grasping and to being able to 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 realize okay we can we can actually live with non grasping I think it was Cha was a, a great example of somebody who lived a, in, in a way that was was uh, yeah there was non grasping but he was uh, in turn it isn't as if he didn't engage I mean he was an incredible leader and uh, uh, it's because of his efforts that there's so many people. Uh, were affected by him when he was teaching and uh, living, and after his after his illness, after his death, um, yeah, huge numbers of people were affected and are still being affected, and and that's a yeah, that's a result of non grasping. Uh, his. Uh, that just the attention to detail, and 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 yeah, and an and integrity of 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 conduct, along with the cultivation of of meditation and and discernment, and these all go together. Uh, so that that. Uh, Say whether it's as if you think of unentangled knowing or non-grasping, um, it isn't just trying to shut everything out or not experience, not feel things, but learning how to see it in the light of of dhamma, learning to experience things from the the place of truth, and when we when we turn our attention when we become familiar with that and keep lifting that up and bringing it into being that's uh, that, that, yeah, the heart opens to it it understands because that's that is our nature 
you know, I mean, it's we're we're fundamentally hardwired to to prefer happiness to suffering. But so often it's again because of the complications and convolutions that uh, we end up entangled in, uh, we don't see it so clearly. That, uh, so this you know, paying attention to how to return to and establish ourselves in this quality of unentangled knowing, that will lead us to a place of of non-grasping and, and uh, freedom from dukkha. So I'll offer that for reflection this evening.